Hi there, and welcome to the Curious Collective podcast, conversations designed for the conscious community to bring awareness to those holistic practices to help you live your best life. So tap into the wisdom and knowledge of our guests to heal, transform, and live as your true soulful self. Welcome listeners. Today with us, we have the beautiful Mary from Free to Breathe, and she's coming to us all the way from New Zealand. So welcome, Mary. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, we would love to hear about you, what it is that you do and what makes your heart sing. Hmm. What do I do? Um, I love breathwork. <laughs> if you go on my Instagram page, you'll just see like breathwork, breathwork, breathwork. And I know a lot of people probably get sick of that, but I don't. Who cares? <laughs> don't care. Um, so basically I teach people how to breathe properly um I feel like our culture has just stuffed up big time <laughs> with especially shallow breathing um not nervous system regulation like there's absolutely no awareness of the body mm. I feel like we've all just been stuck in the mind and the do 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 the go 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 <clears throat> yep and I, I still believe stress is the real pandemic the real killer mm. and it's my mission to help people relax and come home to their true selves basically yeah and your and your greatest tool I'm sure you've got many but the greatest tool and the one you use the most is is connection to breath yes so just slowing the breath down slowing the exhale down mostly mm -hmm. um just knowing that the the best phrase I could say is your exhale is more important mm. so when we exhale we exhale 90 percent of our toxins oh sorry 80 percent of our toxins it's not just going to the bathroom. It's literally breathing out. And the longer you exhale, the more you're detoxifying your cells and your body. And you can start to heal your cells the way they should originally be in that mm. nice healed state. Because it's not the medicine that heals us. It's the cells that heal us. So the medicine kind of gives a push sometimes. Mm. The cells, did you say? Our cells. Yeah, yeah. our cells are there always regenerating always turning over and if they're going to tell the next cell that same story you'll just stay in that state but if mm. you change it up and if you can consciously breathe imagining those cells healing they'll heal and they'll tell a new story and you can literally become a new person within two years oh, I actually love how you've just described that because I've never heard that where mm. I've just pictured in my mind these little cells all sitting together having a little party mm. And they're all yeah. just telling each other these toxic lies. But then yeah. <laughs> I flip the perspective on that and I'm like, there's all these cells together and they're just dancing in a field and they're vibrant yeah. and they're happy and they're, you know, free. And, yeah, what a great analogy to think of when you're thinking and dropping into the body because these bodies mm -hmm. we've got are pretty darn amazing. Yeah. We are a lot more powerful than we know and that's why sound healing is really good too and it's in a universal language isn't it mm. sound it brings us all together but it also brings our cells together and can vibrate at a higher frequency um like with the sound bowls they they lift that vibration and frequency and albert einstein said we were all vibration with all everything's vibrating the earth the trees we are and if we're vibrating at a low state which is mm, guilt and shame and apathy is at the lowest if we are up in love it's up in a higher frequency so we can Joy. use sound to, because as a tuning fork type of thing mm -hmm. they'll hit each other and they'll tell each other they have a party and they'll literally mm -hmm. like oh we actually let's tell it <laughs> let's tell ourselves these good stories and mm -hmm. like pass that on instead of this this like guilt and shame and yeah and yeah. I know our bodies as well, like in a breath session that I was in with you the other day, my mm -hmm. at, on the exhale, um, our facilitator encouraged us to let out sound. And I let out this like really like, mm -hmm. like crazy sound that I'm like, oh, wow. And it just resonated through my whole body. And mm -hmm. what you've just said there is that sound healing, yes, but you can actually be your own sort of sound healer yeah. in a way. Absolutely. And have yeah, you had those and, sounds and, come out when you've done a practice as well? Yeah, sometimes I get different Middle Eastern sounds coming out of me, you know, like the tones. Yeah. Um, but in Soma, so I've done a Soma course. Have you heard of Soma Breath? 
no, tell everyone about it because that would. So Soma Breath is um, it's Niraj. He does this. He's he's an ex pharmacist, so he's studied the science, and he's got a lot of um, science solidified in his te- in his teaching. So he's gone to NASA. He's got the brainwave frequency um, all done. And he went to a neurologist. And in Soma, we do breath, rhythmic breathing and then breath holds. Mm-hmm. And just two rounds of those, the neurologist found that you do quiet the ego mind, the default mode, which is Mary does this, I'm this type of person. I eat these things. Like that can quiet. So you can start to go into your frontal lobes and into your reptilian brain and start to break down those conditioning patternings that you had and once those defenses are gone so it's more of a relaxing technique yeah um the holotropic which is what we do is awesome for like getting there really quick but this is more of a relaxing feminine flow Mm -hmm. um so doing those but also we learn how to hum so you can hum for five minutes and you'll hum from the lower at the lower chakra, which is mm-hmm. your root, which is ah, uh, and then you go to ooh, and then you go to mmm, and it what it does is shifts your vibration from the bottom up and clears out that energy center. Yeah, wow. And different tones vibrate different areas. So yeah. um that's a very pranayama. Um, they'd be doing the shaman's been doing that for centuries but also in hebrew they would do shalom which is the same tone and yeah. when i started to research this because i've done a jewish mysticism course as well i was just like oh my gosh they all knew like yeah. everyone just knew if you use sound to vibrate then you can clear things yeah and- I just yes. got this beautiful warm rush up my whole back. It's like, wow. And I and I guess if you were to do like a study of all the different cultures and religions and all of them, there would mm. be something within all of them that that is a resonance or that's similar that's that's working to activate those energy centers without calling it that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Fascinating. Absolutely. And one cool thing that I also found out was shalom means peace, but in Hebrew it's like wholeness and wellness and um everything it means everything so Mm. yeah and and yoga is like the yoke like yoking us all together there's so many beautiful ways that the that the language has been used Mm. to to bring us all back to that one message that that there is just one a oneness a togetherness a cohesiveness a resonance absolutely and also breath breath means spirit in latin that so, I didn't know that yeah you're literally breathing spirit in like mm. it's your life force it's your safety it's your um nurture mm. so what got imagine. you into breath work what made you love it and dive into it and learn all the things so I'd gone to a counselor like eight years ago and she was like right get up in the bed and breathe and I didn't know this but she was like she'd been doing breath work rebirth since 1987 like yeah her smile lines went up (laughs) yeah like all of her lines went up and I was like I want to do what you do when I'm older and I thought I was going to do it when I was 60 but then lockdown happened and at that time I'd had two kids under three I had three businesses because I was a crazy workaholic psychopath (laughs) (laughs) self-admitted yeah I was um and I had a business partner too, which was pretty toxic. And it was just a lot. So I was laying on my bed, twitching from stress. Mm-hmm. I was getting migraines all the time. Um, and I was, something was like, breathwork, breathwork, Mary, you know what it's like, you know what it, yeah. And I hadn't done it for so long. And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to bail from everything. Mm-hmm. And I sold all my businesses. I had, I was doing makeup for 16 years. So I was in the makeup wow. world. Yeah. The only thing I liked about makeup was connecting with the people. Yeah. And after lockdown, I kept, I finished all my jobs up and I noticed at that time I was just talking to everyone about breathwork <laughs> and I'd even go into my business partner's house and do make shoots with her and just talk about breathwork to everyone. And she'd <laughs> always roll her eyes. 
But you she were like, no deal. one's stopping me from talking about this. <laughs> she couldn't deal with it. She, she, I was like, you should try it. And she's like, nah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just like, I've got to stop. Like I just said to her, like, I'm losing all my passion. Mm-hmm. I've just, I've got to get out. So I Great that with- you could see that for yourself too. Like how many people just crack on and keep going, but you were like, no, I choose me. Yeah. It, it was a long time coming. It was seven years of me in this business and I was doing it to please everyone. Mm. Like I worked my ass off two hours in the night so that everyone would be happy with the work I did or say that I was an amazing entrepreneur and mm. things like that. Um, my dad was a workaholic. So I remember I was the youngest of five and this came up in a, in a child work at the start of my healing process. And he goes, you're the best worker in this family. Mm. And I was like, that's who I am. And yeah. I, that's you what claimed I claimed it. Mm. Yes. I'd go to school and I'd work, work, work. I'd help teachers. Like that's what I did. Mm. And that's how I found my validation. So after that healing session, I was like, nah fuck everyone (laughs) I'm like I'm hurting myself Mm. by pleasing everyone and I'm Mm. then I'm resenting them because I'm not getting back what I need but no one's capable of giving me this much amount of what I'm doing to everyone else (laughs) so it'd be interesting when you look back on it all and it it makes sense you're like ah okay I'm connecting all the dots here this is what's been happening yeah Mm. and the self-realization that's what breathwork has done for me. Like, yeah, I'm the so great thankful. unraveling. I call it the yeah. great unraveling. Yeah, and I even get clients coming now, and I sometimes do um, lots of work teams, mm-hmm. and the boss will come in, and and I'll talk about how my story just then, and she's like, she's like confused, and she's like, don't why don't you want to work hard? And I was like, well, who are you doing it for? Mm. And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> no, you, you're going to bring down all. all. <laughs> well, that's it. And then at the end of the session, she had some tears. She came up to me and she goes, I don't know who I'm trying to impress, but thank you. Like now I can see mm. that I, <laughs> and this is the boss. Like it always starts from the head down, right? So everyone's stress comes from the head and her, and it came from her parents because her parents owned the business too. So like. Uh, uh, and she goes I think I was competing with myself Mm. and um it was just it's just a beautiful work because you help people get out of their limiting beliefs and you help people get out of their striving Mm, out of their head and I know Mm. some of the most powerful journaling sessions I've had have been straight after a breathwork session because it just flows out I'm like where did this come from yeah your ego's not there to stop you (laughs) And so have, can you pinpoint a breathwork session you've personally been through for yourself that's been so profound and sort of like a game changer for you? Yeah, probably that one. Um, it's always the inner child stuff. Um, I always will integrate it into the end of my sessions. Sometimes I'm like, I'm not going to do it. And then I'm like, I've got to. <laughs> because that's the deepest self-love I've ever felt. Mm. Like, it's it's easy to be like just love yourself like mm. god loves you like that's what i got all growing up god loves you so you should love yourself but i never got it mm. until i met my inner child and i was like i love you and there's nothing wrong with you and then i'll hug her but i'm hugging me mm. and it's like i'm standing there in a parallel universe yeah it's just amazing mm. I I can see how much this work lights you up. And I love that you took the leap doing something you love to then teach it to others. That's so beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. And have you like made some beautiful friendships, relationships through well working and helping people through breath work? Yeah. Yeah. I've changed. I was in, I was attracting a lot of people that would use me for my ability to do makeup. Mostly it was all like in that world do their makeup and I had a lot of famous friends and stuff but as soon as I stopped I was just like I changed my whole friend group Mm. and they just dropped away 
Mm. It wasn't hard. It was just like, oh, she doesn't do makeup anymore. Okay, I don't need her. Yeah. And they just all dropped away and I was like, bye. Like I didn't actually care at that time because yeah. I was so tired. I had no time for anyone. <laughs> and, yeah, it was. It, I've got the most unique friendships now where I, we're both seen and it's, I don't even feel that feeling anymore. Mm. It's just amazing how my life has changed. Mm. And I feel that in my whole body when you said that. So it's yeah, very mm. beautiful that you would share that. So <laughs> your journey um, through the breath work, you said you've got two children as well. Have you brought them into the fold? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, we do breathing bees. So like my son's voice is on the thing and um, I still have a little bit of mum guilt from Daniel because when I had Daniel, I was living in Auckland and I was doing makeup driving around from place to place I was starting my brand then I was doing a lot of free work too mm. so he came out very high heart rate very fast breathing mm. <laughs> they were like what's wrong with him and he was stunned as well and um yes everything was fine with him but they were like they didn't know what was wrong with him and yeah. I, now I look back I'm like now I know what was wrong with him <laughs> it was in my body <laughs> and yeah, I just wish I knew all this before I had my babies because um, I can see their reactions like mine. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I was like, breathe. And, and they don't want to hear it. No, but they listen. So I find that with my three. They don't want to hear it, but they do listen. And um, I love that I've seen a couple of stuff you do with your beautiful children and I love the way that you teach breath to them in a way that they understand at their age group so that mm. you're arming them now with the tools that they will carry into their adult. I wish I had a mum like that. That would I know, teach so. me that stuff when I was young, right? Yeah. And my dad's a scientist and he's like, I know all this. And I'm like, but you're not breathing properly. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like, I'm like, why didn't you teach me this stuff? And he's like, oh you didn't want to listen and I was like yeah but you weren't really I guess he wasn't mimicking so what I do is I sit down in front of them and I'll breathe mm. <laughs> or I'll tap and I'll I'll be like I am calm if they're stressing me out I'll just start tapping and they, and they know doesn't like it he's like stop tapping <laughs> and I'm like I'm either gonna lose it or I'm gonna tap Let what do you mommy want tap. he's like he's like go tap <laughs> To the point where my two-year-old will start tapping me and, like, when we go to sleep, she'll start. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And she knows all the places. Yeah. And so that yeah. tapping, we actually had a podcast a few episodes ago where we had someone on talking about that EFT. How did you get into that? That stuff's fascinating. Yeah, I just picked and picked bits from what I'd, what I'd seen and it really works. Mm. Like... Sometimes you forget about it, but do you think it's yeah, the physical it's, touch with it or the affirmations with it? Oh, so I think what it is is um, how I was taught was our reptilian brains are hardwired to go into fight or flight and take over. Mm. So when you tap, it's giving the message that you're not being attacked by an animal. Yeah. So if you were being attacked by a, a lion, you wouldn't be sitting there tapping. Yeah. No. <laughs> So basically it's just give, telling your body that you're safe yeah. so your body can relax. Oh, wow. What a great way to put it. Yeah. I really liked that um, that teaching. So, yeah, just – and that's why in breath work it's really good to do with people with their, their stress because yeah. you're telling the story there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's repetition. So our brain has thousands of neurons, right? And we either go on love or fear with our two receptors. Mm -hmm. A sea slug has three neurons in its brain and it knows what love or fear is. So we don't need to know everything. Mm. We just need to know what love or fear is. And so that's why breath works good is because it's, it's um, you know what's happening next. You know you're going to inhale and you're going to exhale. You know you're going to inhale and exhale and then your brain can actually just relax. And then and you that's can shut all off you've all got to concentrate on. Yeah. Same with tapping. You know, it's going to come. And so with oh, your breath work that you do for yourself and your clients, do you do nasal or mouth? How does that work for you? For me, I like nasal because I had adrenal fatigue for like 10 years. And the mouth will overstimulate me. 
Mm-hmm. But I know people that can't drop in just with the nose. And do you study the Avedic? Um, have you studied the Avedic types? Yeah. There's like, there's the like Veda Peter. and the. Yeah, Veda, Peter, and Kefa. Yeah. So the Kefa, usually they're the, they're the people that need the stimulation because. Yeah. They need to be, they need the adrenaline. Whereas I was running on adrenaline for so long that I just need to not. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to like get out Have of it. Have a break. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like the Western world does need a lot of relaxation mm. techniques because of how we've been conditionally raised. And, and I, I, this is an interesting fact that we can talk about. Do you find now the more attuned you come to yourself and the more you do breath work that you can be out at the shops and you can actually sense who's stressed, who isn't, what's going on for people just by looking at them. Yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, and I just want to hug people. I'm like, it's okay. I know. I will be okay. Behind. Come and breathe was, with me. Yeah, just come and breathe. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> I was walking down the mount, uh, mountain and this lady was open mouth breathing, walking up. Because if you nose breathe when you exercise, you don't get fatigued as mm. much. Like you really can, and you get more power from your diaphragm, which holds your whole posture up. So this lady was walking up, mouth breathing, dying. <laughs> and I go, oh, I've been studying it. Because I was like on fire at that time. I was like, I've been studying about this. If you, sh- if you close your mouth and really like harness that power, you can get up the mountain easy. And she's like, I've been walking this mountain for years. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> okay. All right, you stay in your body. That's fine. You know what, though? She'll next time she's going up that mountain and she's dying, she'll hear you and she'll go, I'll try this nose thing. <laughs> oh, in her head. <laughs> yeah, I hope she did. I hope she did that. You just planted a seed and walked off. Yeah. Drop. <laughs> <laughs> I think just keep spreading your breathy goodness everywhere because that's you planting seeds all over the world. And if you're excited about something, you should talk about it thanks don't hold back don't hold back so if any of the listeners are interested in trying breathwork or they're new to it or they're just not sure what advice would you have for them I think start with something gentle um the best thing for me was because I had to go down the side science route first because I as you know my background with going to church and religious things and stuff I didn't want to jump into another thing that was like spiritual at that time Mm. I just needed to learn this that like the science of the breath and once I learned all that I was like man there's some deep stuff in here like it's actually proving all the things that I needed which was like healing in my cells and my trauma and all the tension was all linked to spiritual stuff Mm. so I healed through that way but James Nestor wrote a book called Breath and a science of a lost art and I started taping my mouth that night oh wow and I yeah because I was a mouth breather I was getting sick every morning and like my nose would block up in the morning because I was mouth breathing because once you get too much oxygen your nose blocks up and it's like slow down (laughs) so mouth taping was a huge game changer for me and that's when I started to be like, man, there's really something in this. Like I haven't got sick for a year after mouth taping. Um, and his breath was six seconds in, six seconds out that he'd found around the world. They even use it in all their religious prayers. It's always six seconds in, six seconds out. And that's a very nice one. Just to sit and just do 10 times a day. Mm. And I felt something lift off my body. Like, the heaviness was gone because I started to do it and I started to be like I can do it properly Um, and I was breathing into my belly and not using my shoulders to breathe and just looking into animals and how they breathe like they none of the animals mouth breathe Mm. and they also breathe slower and live longer so like an elephant breathes four breaths a minute and will live to 120 four breaths a minute yeah Whereas like a rat breathes 120 breaths a minute and dies within two years. So like Mm. if you look at animals and the way they breathe and how long they live, it's always the slowest breathing animal lives longer. And it's the Mm. same with us. Like we can slow down and you'll live longer. Yeah. Collectively as well. 
What a great um, way to describe that using the animals. That I've never mm. heard that. That's so good. And um, I was once in a yoga class with my beautiful friend Ainsley and she said if when you were brought into this earth you were given a prescription of how many breaths you were allowed to take for your whole life, you mm. would be mindful of slowing down and really concentrating and connecting to breath more often. So I'm like, hmm, pondering that. <laughs> yeah, animals are our biggest, are a big teacher because they've got all the reptilian stuff ingrained in them, but they also don't have the social shit where we, <laughs> well, mm, <laughs> they won't really do that because they just be themselves. Yeah, and and it was really interesting in a in a training we're doing yeah. together when we watched that video about, you know, the deer that got hit yes. by the um, lion or whatever it was, and it and it went down on the ground and it was frightened and it had so much adrenaline running through it. But then it shook itself out, got up and just carried on with life as normal. How yeah. many humans do that? None. <laughs> Zero zilch, zip. Unless like you're if fully I just attuned. started going like this, <laughs> you think I was nuts. <laughs> Shaking like a just amazing. Just discharging mm-hmm. that energy from the from the rush of adrenaline yeah. to just carry on with life as normal, like nothing had ever happened. Yeah. Animals. <laughs> Getting yeah, getting into nature. So even I'll just sit with my I have two pigs. <laughs> I'll just sit with them. They lay down and I can tap them, and they breathe into their belly, and the cats breathe into their belly, and the birds breathe in. Every animal breathes into their belly, mm, like a um, dog when they're sleeping. You see their big tummy, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So just sit there and breathe with them, and watch just, them, and yeah, yeah, and it's connection too. So animals. And slowing down the breath and what's the other one? Oh, mouth taping. Mouth taping, yeah. So do you just use any tape or is there like special mouth tape that you can buy? So there's, I use microporous tape. It's like the surgical white tape. Oh, yes. use with bandages. And I just put a strip in the middle of my lips long way. Yep. And I can still talk if I have to. My husband would think that was hilarious. He'd be like, oh, good, she's not talking. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a TikTok video about this that went viral and everyone was nasty in the comments. Oh, <laughs> so we were like, she's, she's crazy and like, oh, my wife needs this all the time. Oh. <laughs> all publicity is good publicity. Go yeah. viral. <laughs> uh, you have dropped so many golden nuggets of wisdom on our call today thank you so much mary for your time is there anything you. else you'd like to share with the listeners before we say goodbye um relationship with your breath um is a big important one too i forgot that but a relationship with your breath you take your first breath when you're born mm. and you take your last breath when you die and in between that your breath's there with you all the time through everything you've gone through and um even through all the sad times and stuff, your breath's always there. So just connect mm-hmm. with it and have a good relationship. Like it's your friend and it's literally called spirit. Like it's always yes. there. Oh, I'm and, getting full body goosebumps. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so powerful because no one can take that away from you. Mm. That is super powerful. Thank you. Listeners, rewind that last bit and listen to it because that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mary, for your time. And listeners down in the comments will be all the links um, to Mary and everything she's about. And we might even drop in the name of that book that you mentioned, the Nesta book. That would be really cool as well. Yeah, I will do that. He's got a lot of podcasts too. Oh, awesome. James Nesta. James Nesta. All right. Thank you so much. (laughs) 